Hi everyone, I'm Kahlo and welcome to the Web3 Fashion Week. I'm looking forward to sharing more today with you on my journey with digital fashion. I'll explain more on what digital means, how it can be done, and how it could look in the future. I'm the founder of Alterage, a digital fashion label and part of the global designer network created by Digitalex to pioneer new models within fashion to create a thriving ecosystem where all those involved can benefit. I have an IRL in real life background in fashion design, both garment and accessories, with pre previous luxury work experience at Saint Laurent and Loewe, where I designed sustainable products and implemented circular solutions into the design process. So let's get started. So moving towards the current fashion system. Like many designers, I chose to work in fashion with a dream to understand the industry processes and contribute my own values and aesthetic. After traveling and working in three fashion capitals, New York, London and Paris, I began to see similarities across these cultures that define our industry of fashion. In order to explore the future, I think it's important to understand where we currently are at the present state. I found a few facts sourced from Capital Counselor that I believe to help summarize the current state of the fashion industry today. So starting with what no one could ignore um, happening uh, all across the world in, in every location was the coronavirus pandemic. We are and still will be recovering from this pandemic over the next few years. As to how long this will be it is difficult to predict. But with this disaster came a silver lining and a realization that our current system is in need of an industry-wide transformation. So following just a few facts that I found, um, the retail sales of clothing in Europe had a significant drop by 43.5% due to the pandemic. So that was either because people were at home, um, not going physically to stores, but as well in the the supply chain and manufacturing side, there was a huge amount of difficulty. Um, a mostly physically, physical industry had a very difficult time translating their entire process to be digital. So by the time coronavirus reached its peak between April and June of 2020, the production went down by 37.4% as well as retail going down by 43.5%. So. I believe that really has had an impact on the next point of the concept of consumption. So as this very staggering fact st says, a modern society consumes 400% more clothing than it did 20 years ago. And not even to be using this, this clothing to its full potential, using this clothing and then discarding it. So. And also, Americans generate about 82 pounds of textile waste annually. Um, I think this is, this is largely obviously due to, to how the fast fashion industry works. People spend money on new clothing every year because it's cheap and therefore becomes disposable. As well, in 2019, fast fashion was nearly 66% of all online traffic. So then these statistics really show that there's really no question anymore that our industry needs to completely translate to sustainable methods and models. Um, as we can see, the fashion industry is accountable for 8-10% to 10 of the overall greenhouse gas emissions. So that's if we integrate both international flights, maritime shipping, the fashion industry will still be more harmful when it comes to gas emissions. And also, apparel is the world's second largest consumer of water. And not even for shipping post-production, in the, the production of the raw material itself, fashion is, is accountable for 24% of insecticides and 11% of pesticides. And also in Europe, um, about 15 kg, 3g pounds of textile is wasted per capita. So fast fashion is presenting a huge ecological problem for the entire planet. Namely in this industry, clothing products are manufactured so rapidly, focusing on quantity rather than quality. Therefore, a few problems arise. For instance, fashion waste, fashion waste statistics show that most of the discarded textiles end up in landfills instead of being recycled, which is obviously not the most environmentally friendly approach. 
Another problem is more on the social side, using things like cheap labor as well as child labor to develop these products. But um, I really believe the, the current consumer as well as the consumer of tomorrow is challenging this. Uh, we no longer stand for such kind of processes, such waste, such treatment towards people. And the, luckily, these new statistics show that 35% and 36% of Gen Z and Millennials prefer buying sustainable and environmental friendly clothing. So, taking this forward, how do we create an industry that is more sustainable and actually does as it says and is not just simply greenwashing um, and using sustainability just as a marketing scheme? So, how do we do that? I believe that it's by going digital, but in our case, rather digital. So fashion right now is going through a massive transformation. This digital shift will be seen similarly to the change we had in the music industry in the late 1990s, early 2000s, with the consumer's adaption to the internet. First, the industry was resistant to the new format and was then forced to adapt in a new climate where companies like Apple and subscription models became king. Then in 2019, the fabric and sold the world's first digital couture dress for 9,500 US dollars. This essentially turned ownership on its head and put forth a proposal that a product in a digital setting can have equal, if not more, value than its physical counterpart. This concept was already quite accepted in the gaming world, with players investing in their fiat and cryptocurrency and game skills and virtual assets, only to be used in game settings. Fashion has a really big fear of digital transformation, which I've seen firsthand. But if these digital opportunities are missed or ignored or just used as cosmetic solutions, the industry will miss out on the opportunity to create a circular and fluid solution across both digital and physical platforms. So, what is digital fashion? So I think this is the reason why we're all here today. Um, I've explained this to anyone from my parents to my colleagues in the luxury industry and many of them don't quite understand what it is or how do we use it. So, Danny Loftus, the creator of This Outfit Does Not Exist, gives a really great definition of what is virtual or digital fashion. She says it refers to any type of fashion article, clothing, accessories, or jewelry that exist in the virtual realm. It spans the clothes that exist on avatars, skins in gaming, and those digital outfits that can be worn by humans. For me, a, re a reason digital fashion is so interesting is the 3D digital asset itself. It contains the basis for a wide range of integrations, not only to create one garment as it would in the physical world, but multiple functions from a single file. So those functions are shown below, the first off being AR filters, augmented reality. So working within the platform, either integrated to Snapchat or Instagram, depending on your market and desired functional adaptability. Um, this will also currently is focused more on the face, um, top part of the body, but over time we will see technological developments more in body tracking to make this look more and more realistic. Second option would be this idea of photo dressing. So DressX, XR Couture, and The Replicant um, are really leaders within this service, essentially creating a personal photo shoot better tailoring the 3D garment to the body of the user than that of the augmented reality filter. So this may change in the, in the future as the technology advances, even as our device devices advance. Um, but those are kind of the main two ways to put a digital garment on your real life body. Then the third um, functionality would be an in-game skin. So this would be wearing the garment or accessory in a game setting onto an avatar. And so depending on the game, this is where it can get a bit difficult because different games have different levels of complexity, different styles, and then that garment needs to be adapted to match that, that game style. So that's something that also um, is um, a bit difficult to progress. 
But I expect these to develop even more as a new kind of social media, as a way to customize our identities through an avatar and interact with others with that identity. Then moving to our fourth category of the NFT collectible. After many heard there was a way to make thousands from a single digital asset, this craze has continued to grow. But what is more important is to connect the real reason you are selling that NFT in order to avoid creating more pixel noise in an image-heavy space. But the blockchain allows for transparency, an element clearly lacking in the fashion industry as well as a connection to the original creator. I see these categories not only evolving over time, but becoming more compatible across different platforms and integrating within each other. Imagine having a digital closet where you can store your garment in all its forms and then resell it when you are ready to try something else. So after we've defined what digital fashion is, this brings us to the comparison of the original physical fashion model and the new idea of digital fashion. So we already do have so many physical garments and textile waste in our system that digital can help to reduce additional overproduction. But I believe when these two worlds really connect and balance each other in one single business model is when we can move closer to a circular and closed ecosystem. So starting with yeah, physical fashion, so it's what we wear on our bodies and have for the past hundreds of years. Um, these big pros on this include physical functions such as warmth, style, comfort, the original reason humans have worn clothing for our IRL body. Um, garments are also normally long-lasting and tangible, um, as well as a preservation of craft and artisanship. So this is especially relevant to the luxury industry here in Paris. Artisans have been creating techniques in leatherworking, pleating, and tailoring for hundreds of years. And I believe it's really important that this knowledge continues as well. And so finally, um, the idea of identity creation. So this is what we use originally to show our personal identity to the world in physical spaces, as well even identify between cultures and separate us into different social groups. So some negatives um, of this model, as I previously mentioned, the current linear design and production system is harmful and taxing to the planet. So this is because it uses a large amount of planetary resources that are not even fully used in the creation of the product. In one factory I visited at a luxury house, 45% of the leather was simply thrown away because it did not have a high enough grade to be used for the product. And also, in order to save the image of the brand, they had to completely destroy the leather in order to um, not have any crossover between that, having their leather being seen on the brand product. So, as well, even completed products are thrown away to landfill before the end of the product's life. So, on average, an item of clothes is worn about seven times before being discarded. So, really, not enough times. <laughs> So then moving to digital. So as we defined in the last slide, digital fashion is an exciting emerging solution to the sustainability problem. So some pros, um, as written by Danny Loftus, who I previously mentioned, include cost-effective creation. So digital design and distribution allow emerging designers to have a voice and really showcase their creativity without needing to invest in the overhead of material, studio space, or capital intensive equipment. So this essentially drastically reduces cost, increases the ability to enter a market, set one so competitive as the fashion market itself. And essentially all you need is just to learn a computer software, have the equipment, and you can, can make digital fashion literally from anywhere all over the world. You don't even have to be in a major fashion city. Um, her second point being planetary preservation. So virtual clothes don't require fabric meaning they don't contribute to the fashion industry's 92 million annual tons of waste. Um, also do not require machinery, aside from computers to be made, or um, any energy or pollution caused by that transportation to be delivered to the buyer. Um, 
um, your third point is avant-garde artistry. So this is another point which I believe we've really lost um, in our sense of physical fashion. Um, as I believe we've become more connected technologically all over between different countries, internationally, there's something that fashion has lost. It's almost all become quite homogenous, quite the same. So I see this as a big um, benefit for digital fashion is to re-explore our, our sense of artistry, um, being able to experiment and not be afraid to lose a bit on some profit margin. So that is definitely uh, interesting and even, uh, yeah, being able to defy gravity, defy the laws of physics for digital fashion. So, um, fourth point for a pro for digital would be this idea of using a blockchain. Um, in fashion right now, and I've personally experienced a lot of difficulty um, maintaining ownership or control or credit of the designs I've created. So I've had several instances where I've shown something to somebody, I see it walk down the catwalk uh, six months later. So you can imagine this is not a good feeling as a designer and something I really would like to transform. Um, so this is how the blockchain can really come uh, in handy as each style is, is minted um, with a set of information. And so that information is always connected to either if it's NFT or just uh, the information itself. And it will carry along the product throughout its life, ideally. So this is also a big uh, game changer for the industry since we have a lot of issues of copyright and uh, infringement. So with every pro, there's a couple of cons. So. Uh, this is a totally new concept in the industry, so people are starting to get the necessary training, but it is difficult to explain to perhaps the everyday consumer um, who is so fixated on physicality, um, what does it mean to even own something that's not physical, how does it have the same value or even more value. So that's something I think will take time um, wow. as we get more use cases and as these use cases become easier to implement into everyday life. Um, as well as the machines required. So um, I work on a Mac, um, which I learned after is actually not the best uh, processor, um, but it's important to have a high amount of storage as these um, programs for rendering um, take a lot of a lot of energy as well as all of these um, blockchain servers as well so hopefully that will improve in the future and become less energy taxing um, and finally there's we still don't have an, uh, quite a lot of standardization so we don't have yet have a way to use these different functionalities across different platforms. They're all quite segregated. So once that happens, we will really see, um, I think, this take off in the everyday life. So I believe the key is really to create a digital ecosystem, something focused on circularity within all processes in both physical and digital worlds. So, then let's bring us to the point. What is fidgetal? This word has been thrown around since 2013, originally created by the Australian agency Momentum. They define it as the concept of using technology to bridge the digital and physical world with the unique purpose of providing unique interactive experiences for the user. For me, I've previously heard this term more to, de to describe retail settings as technology has become more integrated into our everyday lives. For example, um, being able to shop on Instagram and then go into a store. For me, it's been a lot more about the process of consumption and purchasing, not actually the product itself. So. Post-COVID, uh, this integration will take on new and deeper levels. With the launch of things like augmented reality glasses, 
and progression on virtual reality headsets, we will be able to reach a more seamless connection between our U URL and IRL lives. So for my brand, Alterage, I have designed Fidgetal in a slightly different way. I believe it is the optimization of a product format according to its most socially beneficial and eco-responsible impact in both physical and digital worlds. So this is taking a bit step further, not only saying we are having a transaction between these two formats, we are searching to enhance our lives in both physical and digital places. So with this mutual benefit, we can reverse the catastrophic impacts of climate change and use digital tools to find real-world solutions. So for me as a designer, this is my goal um, and really what I want to bring to my brand and my experience in this new field. So instead of dividing these two worlds, how can we bring them together to optimize the benefits of each? So this begins by understanding the best processes in each format best by meeting the most circular, least wasteful, and sustainable. So for me, as an IRL trained designer, um, I've been taught to all the skill set of how to create a physical garment, whether that is creating the pattern, it's sourcing, it's cutting the pattern, sewing the sample, to then resulting in the final finished product. Um, but around these uh, values of how to move this category forward, um, there's three clear values that need to be implemented. So that in itself is sustainability. Um, it's a bit of a broad term, so I believe that circular and circularity is a bit more specific. It's essentially creating a closed loop in any process. So really to avoid waste. The, the waste of one process becomes the food slash energy source for the next. Um, and also something important, such as I mentioned before with the blockchain, is making the process transparent. I believe in the future the consumer is going to ask, where was my product made, who made it, what is the carbon impact, and I think this will either legally or um, be demanded by the consumer for all brands to provide this information. So that brings us to the core of the physical object, which is the material. So I've come up with a variety of techniques, of um, ideas on how to do this in a more circular way. Um, during my time at um, the luxury companies, this was really my focus on how do I take uh, our process, make a modification, but still result in a product that still feels like luxury it still can compete on the same level and is just as desirable to the consumer. So a few of these options include upcycled material. So this is essentially the most sustainable as you are already taking something that's existing and reusing it. So obviously that would be the benefit to reduce waste, but the difficulty with this is obviously to have standardization um, to create larger quantities. Wow. So that is, I think, um, a big reason brands resist slightly or they make some capsule collections, but there's definitely um, a change in at least the luxury industry saying, um, oh, upcycled can still be luxury. So there's still value. Uh, the second is uh, more of a kind of future thinking um, idea of how to take our waste and recycle it. So recycling is when you actually physically change the material um, to a new form. So this would be for example taking um, used jeans, um, blending down the fiber and then reweaving that essentially into thread and then the, the, the textile again. So that also has promise but I think what is important with recycled material is that you keep it in a closed loop. So I heard an example where we're making all of these um, garments from plastic bottles. So interesting idea to reduce the amount of waste, but um, the person I spoke with recommended it's more beneficial to keep this plastic bottle in its same loop of um, supply and demand uh, 
um, send the plastic bottle back to the manufacturer who can turn it into another plastic bottle would be more sustainable than to create a new fabric from it because at the end of life of the fabric, what do you do? You can't turn this into a plastic bottle. So I think the goal is to always think about what is the end of the life of the material, what is the end of the life of the garment, how do you extend it or how do you recycle it or transform it into something new. So going then back to our kind of original start to clothes, we made things from linen, we made it from hemp, we made it from 100% cotton. So things like this are essentially biodegradable, they, um, depending on the material, um, could be compostable. So that essentially is created from nature, so therefore um, sustainable, but all these factors depend specifically on the manufacturer, the source, the, te the textile, the fiber. So these are just um, starting categories to get started. So then moving to specific techniques. Um, there's a couple that I've done um, with my physical garments. So one of that is zero waste. So I think this is really interesting. It's There's several resources on the topic for zero waste. So this mostly comes from pattern making. Um, and specifically when speaking about garments, um, you have the kimono, which is an example of a zero waste product. Um, because the textile was so important to the culture, to society, and had beautiful dyes, they wanted to preserve it as much as possible. So therefore, um, they would try to eliminate any waste in the process. So, I think it's entirely possible to apply this, this technique, this method, to our physical garments today. So that's the first, first method. The second would be to reuse what is left over, which kind of goes back to the upcycled topic. So that would be maybe you're cutting out your pattern, you have little um, spaces in between each piece, trying to figure out how do you take these pieces and then recreate them into a new textile, um, something like this. So that's another option. The third option would be to make to destroy. So like I mentioned before, how do we think about the end of the life at the beginning, which is essentially what circularity is. So how do you make a product? Um, you can even make a product temporarily, even in I think the 60s and creating paper garments and fashion. And if you went in the rain, the garment is totally destroyed. But maybe that could be intentional. So that's another thought. Um, and then relating more to the idea of production would be to move to models that are pre-order and made to order. Because honestly, why are we making garments or products before someone wants them? It's the reason we have so much waste, we have inaccurate predictions of what people want because we don't know. Um, though we do have technologies like AI and things helping to predict, why do we need things that with there's no demand? So for me personally, that's a big thing. So then when do we want to make physical? So we want physical when it's made to last, we can resell it, we can repair it. Um, we have a closed loop product life cycle. We have eco-friendly materials, socially responsible production, and then also can give this opportunity for custom and tailored fit. So now moving to digital, the counterpart. So going through the same kind of process, what are the values of digital? Um, I think we will we'll definitely continue to move towards this idea of green technology, um, trying to really reduce the amount of energy that uh, these machines take while either minting an NFT or um, creating the garment itself. How can we reduce that by using renewable solar panels, things like this. Another value which I think that digital fashion especially brings is this idea of co-creation and collaboration. So within these physical studios, there's always this sense of kind of secrecy, uh, a bit hidden away. So I think one thing I'm really excited about digital is this idea that you can be working in film, you can be working in animation for video games, and then you can work with the designer, so we really come together, share our different skills, and 
to create something more collaboratively. And so then that leads in a sense to giving credit as well. As I mentioned, I've had some issues with that in the past, so this is also really important to me. How do you credit everyone involved? Make sure they all can equally benefit if it's only just for the notoriety or if it's also for um, maybe a royalty. Um, how can we change the process inside studios um, from just uh, being a poor intern years on years just in order to break into the industry into someone where everyone um, brings their own value. So, um, And then moving to materials. So obviously with digital, there's a lot, there's no boundaries. There's your dress can be, yeah, made of smoke, on fire, twisting, moving, there's a video. It can really be anything. So that's quite exciting. Um, essentially a designer's dream to be able to create exactly as it is in their head. So the second is something Digital X is really pioneering is this idea of modular component libraries. Um, they, they, they say it by a different term, but I think this is especially important because as we build the elements, it will help us to put them together and without needing to completely remake them every time. So for example, in the physical world, in a physical fashion company, we have a t-shirt. So every company has a t-shirt. So they're all different based on different grading systems, based on different base sizes. So, but why do we need that? It's, it's a lot of work just to protect your own t-shirt, which essentially looks the same as someone else's. So the proposal is we all create, we create one t-shirt and then this t-shirt can be used as a base by anyone and it could even be attached to royalties so that original creator can continue to gain and profit from that. So really opens a new idea of something also more collaborative. And then finally, the materials are minted on the blockchain, so we would always know who was the originator of that, that material and when it could be transformed um, into something else. So then finally, the techniques with digital. Um, this is just what my process has been. I'm still somewhat new. I have a lot to learn about um, how work, like what could be the best workflow. I've spoken with several people who all use different things and people who come from more from a animation background are more with Marvelous Designer, Houdini, um, these programs uh, that are less connected to maybe the technicality of fashion. And so for me, since I've been a pattern maker, I'm more comfortable with flow um, and something that is already so close to something like Optitex as well. Um, and then as far as the actual rendering, um, it was done in a blender and then Substance Designer Material is a really great program to give that realism to the digital fashion, which I believe is a big part of making this whole thing convincing. So then and to summarize, when to go digital, um, when you want to experiment with silhouette, with shape, with anything, wear the impossible, Promote without physical costs, um, made for the metaverse. So this was relating also to um, the different use cases we said before. Um, promote cross-industry collaboration, as well as being protected and verified through the blockchain. So, to summarize, um, it's really about finding the balance, I think, between the two models. I don't think it's about choosing one or the other. I think it's about taking the, the positives of both and really thinking about those in the three values of being, making sure, okay, is this sustainable? Is this circular? Is this transparent? Um, does this benefit the people who are making it, the people who are buying it, and the people who are wearing it? So how can we take these elements, create new business models um, to something that can benefit all players involved? So yeah, this last diagram just shows this. Always think in a closed loop system because that is how nature works. So the closer we get to nature and follow its processes, the least impact we will have on our planet.
I'd be happy to contact with anybody um, who is interested in digital, would like to discuss more on the process, um, would be happy to connect. Um, you can send me a message on Instagram or by email, and I will be launching Alturage this fall. Um, with not just me, of course, with some with help um, with my great collaborators. So thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you, guys.